Hey guys, I just finished up doing some things around the house and I remembered that I had recently finished up this concept that I was working on for my comic and I realized why not do a voiceover that. <laughs> I kind of wanted to touch upon some issues that I would run into a lot when I was working or you know trying to figure out an idea for a comic and then finalizing the idea, having the characters and not really knowing how I was gonna go about making backgrounds. I know that, at least for me, it is one of those things that I struggle the most with and I kind of push away issues that come from composing, you know, a, a background. And I will be the first to say that I don't think I am any shape or form of being a great background artist, but it is something that you can learn to love if you just think about it in a certain way and less of in a way that you just despise anything that has to do with making you know buildings and structures because sometimes you don't want to do those things sometimes it's just a pain to even think about filling in the, the background and i think that right there thinking about filling in the background of a comic book page or any page in general is already starting off on a bad foot I would say. So what I've learned recently, or maybe I should just say what I've learned over several years I would say of making backgrounds is that you have to have some character to the backgrounds that you're making and what I mean is obviously don't put characters in every background some backgrounds can work alone really nicely what I meant was try to think about uh, mood the time of day and just what is the tone that you're trying to go for in the piece like what what are you trying to convey to your readers like is it is it supposed to be a scary story is it supposed to be a story that's happy and it's always summer and things like that can help you decide you know, what colors would go with what so if we're doing something that's summery you wouldn't want to put too many dark colors i would say because it's it's always bright in the summer right but something that i've started doing is making a couple of concepts for ideas that i have floating around in my head and of course using references so for these particular thumbnails i'll call them i had a couple of things that i already knew i wanted to have in the comic so i wanted it to have some of uh, suburbia feelings and i wanted it to be maybe a town that was not too far from uh, mountains or hilltops and it's a mixture of things right like i wanted some of new york coming in through some of the streets so there's a corner bodega and you have brick buildings the story is moody so i focused more on colors that were purplish in hue and blue like some greens but what i realized was that the first drawing that i did actually didn't look like a bodega that you would find in New York. It just looked like a cafe and the reason for that was because the inspiration for the bodega was a picture that I took last summer of this, I'm gonna say it's a bubble tea place that I saw in the city and I just thought it looked so cute. Squished in between uh, these tall buildings, it, it just felt out of place but in a very special way. So I took that picture and I referenced it directly and that's why I don't think it has the essence of any corner deli. It just won't have it. But I liked how it came out and because I have this drawing, I can always use it somewhere else in the story and it doesn't have to be a bodega. It could literally be anything else that I want it to be. But I feel like I'm going on a ramble here. So what I would say you could pull away from that rant is that you should always use references if you're really trying to go for something that's specific or you just have no idea how to even start making a, a little town or a building. 
because God forbid if I didn't have any reference for that structure that I did of the, the little cafe, I don't know what the hell that would look like. <laughs> so I would say, please use references and don't worry about perspective when you're just trying to flesh out an idea that you have. And that brings me to my next topic and the next thing that I learned was that you should always, when you make backgrounds, put everything that you want to show in your piece. Do not worry about the perspective looking wonky or just not making any sense because you can always do afterwards. Ideas sometimes just come and you have that, you know, that fuel and you're just like, I have all of these things that I'm going to put into my characters. In this example, let's use like your character's bedroom. I have all these things that I want to include in their bedroom that will show their personality and will show the type of person that they are and like how disorganized they may be. Put everything into that piece. Just put everything that comes to your head and then once you do that, if you are working digitally, because that's where I have the most experience uh, making backgrounds is you can always use uh, transform tools to fix anything that just ain't looking right and um, of course if you're doing like a two-point perspective or if you're doing three-point perspective you can always just pull it off by putting everything in first and then afterwards going back and correcting the mistakes because a lot of times you can purposefully be out of perspective like let's also throw that out the window because I, I, I think once you go through the rigorous pains that comes with learning to draw everything in perspective and going crazy because it always feels like the worst part you know just even saying this i think i've pinpointed the reason why backgrounds are so annoying i think it's the whole idea of everything having to look like it would fit in real life you know you can't have a building that's super tall in the background and then have something super short in the foreground like just these perspective rules that are just ingrained into every art student is i think can drive you crazy and can really make you hate the thing but i obviously with any craft is once you learn the rules you can totally bend them break them throw them out the window like who the fuck cares just it doesn't matter once you have it down you can be as creative as you want and as wrong by our professor's standard you can be all of that so trust me put everything you want into your piece and then come back to it later because it doesn't matter it, it's a fucking comic like have fun you know if you're not having fun doing the piece you're gonna hate yourself trust me <laughs> from experience but anyways going off that crazy rant once again um i think something else that i learned actually doing this these thumbnails was if you're going to make concepts for back uh, if you're going to make backgrounds for places in your comic because you want to know how it's going to look before you even incorporate it into your panels, you should, without a doubt, you should take a point in your script that shows or I should say describes a setting and you should draw that place that's being described. Because you described it in your script, it will most likely come up in the story. So if you have a frame of reference so that once you start thumbnailing your comic, you can always just go back to the thumbnails that you did for the background or the concepts that you did for your background. This is the same way it works for the character sheet that I did last week. You always have a point of reference to go to so that things always look consistent and it doesn't take you ages just to fill in the background of a comic book page because it's already been done so there's no guessing it's just there the best takeaway that i could give in everything that i've said so far is that you should maximize how fun everything should look you shouldn't hate the process and some things that I've learned that make it a better experience is making structures have personality 
So if you're gonna draw your main character's home, you can always have the home, have things about it that aid to the way your character behaves. I'll throw an example of a witch that lives in an apartment or a house. Let's say a house. She lives in a house on a mountaintop. You can make the building as wacky as you want. The structure itself could have a shape of a witch's hat or it could have some sort of tree branches which kind of looks like bottom of a broom. You can honestly do whatever you want. Things don't have to be like real life because I don't like real life so I don't want everything to look like everything that I see every day. And it could still be a realistic story but you don't have to have lines that are so rigid even though some things like let's say a weapon or like an item that's important to the character, you might have to do things to it so that it doesn't look so floppy and like the same line weight of your character because it's not made of the same material. But not everything has to be straight. I think there's more attitude. There's something so much more pretty about a line that wiggles a little bit because I think you see the artist behind that line. You know that somebody drew it and it's not, it wasn't drawn by a robot or it wasn't drawn by a bunch of rulers. Like it's not that fun to look at, like, at least in my opinion, like you can really do whatever you want and I, I think that's generally biggest mental barrier when it comes to backgrounds where the story will lead and you know how you want to voice that idea all of that will make the process more simple for you and if you're in a rut and you have no way to access that part of your brain that has ideas and has all the creative things that make you want to create things every day i would say look for inspiration in real life or in artists that you love so generally i would say when you use reference, use reference from real life. Don't use reference from other artists. You can always be inspired by them, but I think I have this aversion to having something that an artist has created right in front of me as I'm making a background because I always fear that if I look at it for too long, my work will eventually be a replication of what I'm looking at. and. You don't want to make something that an artist has made and then claim it as your own. I don't think there's anything wrong with being inspired by an artist and maybe copying an artist on your own time just so you can learn how an artist made a certain thing. But I think I just, me personally, I avoid it because I don't want my, the things that I'm trying to put out there to look like someone else's. I want what my story to be distinct. I want it to have its original body. I don't want it to be influenced so much by something else. But I would suggest if you don't feel great that day, that's artist speak for I have no inspiration so I don't know what to do with myself. I would say look online at your favorite artist or you can always look at you know the art of any video games that you really love or any comics that you love, any animations that you've recently watched know any films it could be disney it could be anime anime is always welcome but it could be anything you love and you can just look through that and you'll i don't know a lot of times that sparks some inspiration you can always go on deviantart and find something um i would say try to stay away from social media as much as you can i just don't think social media is great for artists when they are in a certain disposition of not feeling great about their their own art and their own abilities i would say look outside of that because there's a lot more to see i hope that helped you and i'll see you soon